Hey guys, what's going on? It's Don here from Novus Tech, and welcome back to the channel. And today I'm gonna to show you guys a new way to run Android on Linux. So let's get started. So it's been a while since I last did a video on running Android on Linux, and now there's a new way to do it. This is called WayDroid, which allows you to run Android on Wayland. Not only can you run Android fully on this setup, you can also run individual applications that will be integrated into your desktop. So today we're gonna be running this on Ubuntu 22.04, and I'm gonna show you guys how to install it and, and what you need to do to get it up and running. Now let's jump over to my desktop. So here we have the website to WayDroid. You actually have the documentations, which you will rely on a lot of to learn how to use these applications and to install specific stuff. Uh, you also have the install and WayDroid Linux beta, which is what we're gonna be running. Uh, going down the list, you could see that the main features of it is that you got full app integration, uh, multi-window mode, and full UI mode to make it look like you are on an Android desktop. It's full and it's free and open source and you got near native performance, which is true. I actually played around with this and it's really, really fast. I do like the full integration part where once you install an app, it will actually get the icons to your application menu. And then again, you have so many things you could do with this. Now if I hit install, what's really cool is that it actually supports ARM and ARM64, as well as the standard x86 and the 64-bit CPUs, but you can probably get this working on Raspberry Pi. Now they do have some issues with supported GPUs. You're gonna to have to read through the documentations regards to uh, AMD, Nvidia, and Intel. Supposedly right now, Intel is the best support. It actually works right out of the box without doing much, but AMD is the next uh, thing that works really well, and Nvidia is the one where you actually might need software rendering. So let's jump into it and see where we're at with this. Now, go back into supported CPUs, and then we're gonna go into documents, and here are the install instructions for Arch Linux, uh, Zorin OS, Fedora, a bunch of stuff. We're gonna be using Ubuntu. Now I already did this beginning step, which is install curl and CA certificates, as well as adding this line into my repository so I could just sudo apt-get. And that's what we're gonna jump into. Now, sudo app install waydroid. Again, I already have the previous lines done, so you didn't have to sit through it. But all you have to do is just install WayDroid, and then you're gonna have this new menu in your application. All right, so pop in here, you got WayDroid. And once this boot, the first time, this is the first initial boot up, you have two options where you could use vanilla, where it doesn't have any Google Apps, or if you want Google Apps, you could do this version of G Apps. Now, depending on your needs, you might want it or you might not. I've tested both of them, they both work. But in the G Apps version, you do need to certify the device like I did on my previous video with Android with G Apps. Basically, you have to go to a website, submit this code, and certify the install, and then you should be able to get G apps working. For now, we're gonna use vanilla because that's, it's just, I don't have that as much pop-ups or anything uh, coming up as I'm doing this video, but they both work. Now, the install usually takes about four to five minutes depending, four to five minutes depending on your internet speed or depending on their internet speed because my internet speed is faster than what it's downloading here but ultimately it takes about four or five minutes to get everything downloaded and up and running. So I'm gonna let this go. All right, and we are back. Once this is all done, uh, you could just hit the done. And the next time you run that application, it will actually bring you directly to the desktop of Lineage. So it is using Lineage OS. Again, G Apps does work, I've tested it. So if you do need to go that route of Google Apps, you totally can. It, it does seem a lot faster not running G apps just on vanilla. I, I feel like the boot up time is much quicker. The application runs a little bit smoother. That's just me, but it's up to you guys what you need to use. Now, you could see that I just swiped up just like a normal Android. You, you could swipe up and get the application menu. Uh, if you pull down from the top right, you have all your settings over here. If you pull down from the middle, I believe, it's notifications. Oh, it's the same thing. Um, you can actually go into the menus and go into settings and change some stuff around. But for now, I'm actually gonna close this out. It will still be running in the background, but if I was to run, say, an app, you can see now I have more apps on my desktop. And if I need to run something, say, like a calculator, it will automatically pull my Android app. Actually, when you're stuck in the menu, it doesn't. But the idea is if I was to, let's close this out again and try it. 
close this out, close this out. And if I was to go over here and click on calculator, there you go. It brings up the calculator itself and I should be able to use whatever I need to do with it times six and then equals. There you go. I could close this out and quit. At this point, you could, I got no recent items because I closed that out. If I wanted to install applications, again, check their website. There's a lot of guides on installing applications, running everything through command line, um, something like this. All right, so if you follow the instructions on installing applications, all you have to do is just WayDroid app, and then you could do install, remove, launch, or list. So I did have something downloaded, which is pppspp.apk. So what I'm gonna do is jump into my terminal and go to CD downloads. So I'm gonna do WayDroid app install pppspp.apk. Oh, you know what? I do need to start it back up. So let's go into this WayDroid and let's turn that back on. Okay. And while that is running, I could go back into my session and reinstall pppspp.apk. Once that is done, which is really quick to install, it's like native speed when you're running this. I could pull into this application and now you see pppspp. Everything runs. I could allow the media to read. Everything seems to be smooth. Now, for all I know, it might be running my GPU. I really can't tell right now. Actually, can I tell? Let's see. NVIDIA SMI and Firefox GNOME Shell. No, it is not running my GPU, but it's still pretty good for software rendering. Now, for me to get into something to work, there is a directory that I could play around with. So um, again, read the documentation. It'll actually tell you where everything is. For now, let's go back here. Let's go to home. And I'm gonna pop over to one of my folders. In my downloads, I do have um, Dirt 2. So I'm just gonna copy this. And if you go to your home folder, go into dot share or dot local share WayDroid, which is right down here, data, uh, I think it's media. And then you do have to type in your password in here, zero, and then that's where your directories are. You can actually link this directory somewhere else, but for now, I'm just gonna leave it here. And if I was to transfer that file over, go to downloads, now you would see my ISO. Now I'm not gonna be able to play the game but at least you can kind of see the performance goes because I only have a mouse and keyboard. I didn't link anything over. So playing it would not be fun. I'm gonna create a save file, confirm. And you can see like how smooth it kind of runs. I mean, you could tell that it's got some pixelation, not pixelation, uh, frame skips, but ultimately it runs the application. It looks pretty smooth. I'm gonna create a quick uh, file. And let's do that. It's saving. You can see the graphics. Doesn't look too bad. It's moving in. That's not that bad either. Single player. Let me see if I can start a game real quick. It's so smooth. And I think it's software rendering because it didn't show up on my NVIDIA SMI that it's running uh, GPU. Yeah, that's kind of funky, the color wise, but otherwise, so far the graphics are running pretty smooth. Yeah, look at all the cars. It's got like a weird tint to the color. Maybe you could do something in the PSP uh, emulator to kind of get the colors working. But the graphics don't look too bad at all. I can't drive with the mouse and keyboard, so uh, that's why it's, it doesn't look like I'm doing much. Like I can't turn left while trying to do that. Anyway. Point is, seems like everything is working. And again, this is geared towards more like if you wanted to use Spotify or if you wanted to use iHeartRadio or something like that and you wanted to integrate it into your Linux desktop, you can with this method. And you could also hide these icons. You don't need everything up here, but yeah, it, it works pretty good. 
anything you want to do uh, or if you have any questions before you ask me check out the documentation they probably have something all set up like uh, the multi window or the full screen stuff like that you will probably have to read the documentation to figure out like setting up share folders I figured out where the folder was by just reading this documentation and I manually just copied and pasted the ISO over to there Otherwise, um, yeah, the documentation should cover most of the questions that you have. So that is it. The installation was super easy. Um, Android runs pretty smooth in this type of setup, especially the way I have it just running and it's software emulated according to what I feel. And yeah, no problem so far. Again, use my Android video for Raspberry Pi as a reference to get G apps working because like I said, there's a method there to get the uh, UID working and then getting the Play Store working. So I'll leave a link to that video on the top left. If you have any questions about this, hit it up down in the comments below or on my Discord. If you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my Nerd Cave, hack till it hurts.